Hey guys, before we go any further, I wanted to announce that my 24 hour charity stream will take place on December 19th to 20th on Twitch. This year I'll be raising money for United Way's COVID-19 Community Response and Recovery Fund. As you know, the pandemic has changed all of our lives drastically, regardless if we've been in contact with the virus or not. Especially in the US, there has been a spike in new cases recently. Just by showing up on December 19th to hang out on the stream, you're providing your direct support to the cause even if you're not able to donate any money. In addition, all revenue from subs, bits, and ads will go directly to the cause itself. I'll also have a bunch of funny challenges you can look forward to if we reach certain milestones. As we approach the new year, let's leave the worst parts of 2020 in the past. It's time for us to heal. Together. Today, we'll be covering weapon and artifact builds for Kaching. A full disclosure, my Kaching is not fully maxed out yet. I only have one constellation, and if you've watched my live streams, you know how bad my luck is with artifacts. This is not bad for support. <laughs> Defense, HP, HP attack. Oh. I'll be releasing more videos on my progress as I go along, so make sure you're subbed to this channel. I'm currently official DPS in Electro Kaching main at AR47 and have cleared up to floor 11 in the Abyss. I haven't attempted floor 12 since I need to build up a proper pyro lineup to be able to clear that floor. I will be covering both the Electro Kaching build along with the Auto Kaching build and with the help of the reference document written up by r slash Kaching mains, I'll be sharing my favorite artifact sets and weapons to run on both versions. If you're having trouble creating a team for Kaching, check out my best team for Kaching video, where I break down the best teams for both playstyles as well. In general, Auto Kaching seems a lot more free to play friendly because her team comps are relatively cheap and her ideal weapons are also pretty accessible as a free to play or light spender. Let's talk about weapons. In the early game, in terms of 3 star weapons, Filet Blade is great for the time being. Dark Iron Sword is a free to play attainable weapon and can be a decent option as a placeholder. These weapons are just temporary until you can get a better one. In general, I wouldn't use too many resources to get them upgraded, just treat them as a placeholder until you can get something better. Let's take a look at 4 and 5 star weapons. The best weapons for Electro Kaching as we approach late game are as follows. Aquila Favonia, Black Sword, Lion's Roar, Skyward Blade, The Flute, and Prototype Rancor. Aquila Favonia is the best in slot. Although it has physical damage bonus as a secondary stat, which is almost irrelevant at all times when you go for the Electro build, the fact that it's a 5 star means the base attack scales way harder than rest of the 4 stars, which feeds a lot more damage in Kaching's E. Aquila beats the Black Sword in damage in both normal and charge attacks by 1.4% and skill damage by 15.2%. Black Sword I have as second to Aquila Favonia. Many people may prefer the Lion's Roar due to the passive. However, the secondary stat of the Black Sword is crit rate. Especially since Kaching scales so hard with crit damage, being able to keep up with the 1 to 2 crit rate to crit damage ratio is very important. And Black Sword allows you to consistently hit that without relying on good artifact RNG. The healing from Black Sword passive is also very relevant and allows you to play more soft healing, keeping your Kaching on the field longer for maximum DPS. Lion's Roar is my third ranked weapon. If you are lucky enough to get a sufficient amount of crit rate, I like Lion's Roar over Black Sword. Be careful because the damage boost is conditional to on either a Electro or Pyro status on the opponent, so make sure you trigger it before you go all in on your combo. If you don't, you're missing out on a lot of potential damage. R3 Lion's Roar beats Aquila in terms of overall damage for Electro. Skyward Blade is my 4th ranked weapon. Although it's a 5 star, at max rank it only has 41 more base attack than max level prototype Rancor. 
The energy recharge secondary stat may be relevant, but most of the time, since Kaching only requires 40 energy, you're gonna hit 100% on your burst meter before the CD finishes. I'd much rather have an offensive substat here. Flute and Prototype Rancor are great choices, especially on a budget. Flute gets better the more enemies there are, and Prototype Rancor just offers very solid stats for a craftable weapon. I didn't mention Black Cliff and Royal here because I believe their passives are very bad in most situations. Let's take a look at 4 and 5 star weapons for Auto Kaching. The best weapons as you approach late game are as follows Aquila Favonia, Black Sword, Flute, Prototype Rancor, Lion's Roar, and last, Skyward Blade. In general, I believe Auto Kaching is a lot more free to play friendly because the build path and team comps can be completed on a budget. Again, Aquila Favonia is best in slot, and this time it's even better because you can get more out of the secondary stat. I also have Black Sword as my second ranked weapon for Auto Kaching. Crit Rate is just such a nice secondary stat to have and allows you to prioritize other relevant stats like attack percentage, crit damage, and physical damage bonus in your artifacts. The sustain from passive is huge in allowing you to stay on the field longer and not have to consistently switch out to heal up. Again, it allows you to run soft healing and shields over a traditional healer. That flexibility is awesome for team building for all different types of situations. I like Flute as my third ranked sword because it gives you some flexibility in terms of AoE. Prototype is great after that and is the best free to play weapon on this list. The secondary stat is very relevant and R5 Rancor beats R1 Black Sword in terms of damage for the physical build. Lion's Roar is still pretty decent but not better than some of the options above. If you do play this weapon with your physical build, make sure to use the first half of your E to proc Electro first before going into your charge attack sequence. Skyward Blade is last because the secondary stat provides no value for the physical build. Again, no Black Sword and Royal here. For early game artifacts, it doesn't really matter what sets you have equipped. In fact, it's more important to equip artifacts with good stats than to force complete a two-piece set. In terms of priority, look for base attack slash attack percentage, then crit rate, then crit damage in that order. If you have the luxury, good artifact sets for the early game are Berserker and Sojourner. For both set, I would only go two-piece. For late game artifacts, the stats that are most important in terms of priority are crit rate, then electro slash physical damage percentage, then crit damage, then attack percentage last. Generally, you want to set at around 60 to 70% crit rate and 120 to 140% crit damage. Anything above that will net you with large opportunity cost, and you should look to invest into other stats like electro or physical damage percentage or attack percentage. Again, I want to stress that it's more important to have good main and sub stats on your artifacts than it is to complete sets. For example, if you have a Maiden's piece that gives you a lot of crit or has a great main stat like Electro or Physical Damage, use it. For Electro Kaching, the sets that I like the most are as follows. 4-piece Thunder Soother, then 4-piece Thundering Fury, then 2-piece Fury, 2-piece Glad, then 2-piece Fury, 2-piece Noblesse. I have these in order on the condition that you have the best possible main and substats. Again, pick up whichever four of these gives you the best artifact stats. I like Thunder Soother the most since it gives you added durability and allows you to do more consistent sustain damage from your four piece bonus. The passive condition is much easier to fulfill compared to Thundering Fury and have more consistent damage if you're swapped on your Kaching for about 65% of the time or above. Play this set if you find yourself with a team full of long cooldown buffers, for example Xingqiu or Bennett, that give your main DPS stats and extra damage. 4-piece Thundering Fury is great for when you're building a very combo-oriented team. With this set, you're swapping out your Kaching very frequently and focusing on proccing elemental reactions. These teams are the ones that usually run Venti and Mona as key support pieces to help set up for massive AoE burst combos. If you play this build, make sure your support have spammable abilities to constantly proc reactions. 2 Fury 2 Glad or 2 Fury 2 Noblesse are generically good builds if you have a mixed playstyle. Use the 2 Glad build when you're leaning towards Kaching having more field time, and use 2 Noblesse if you're leaning towards building her for her burst damage primarily. The 2 Fury 2 Glad build will be better against fewer, tankier enemies, while the 2 Fury 2 Noblesse build will be better against large mobs. 
For physical kaching, the sets that I like the most are as follows. 2-piece glad, 2-piece bloodstained, then 4-piece thunder soother, then 4-piece glad, 4-piece bullet, and finishing that up with 4-piece bloodstained. I like 2-piece glad and 2-piece bloodstained because it's the most versatile in every situation. It's generic enough to be good against both mobs and bosses. It's very simple to play and doesn't require you to be mindful of certain combo sequences or conditions that you need to fulfill. 4-piece Thunder Soother is my second ranked recommendation. You need to make sure to keep up your electro status on enemies whenever you go through your attack sequence so you can get the most out of your passive. This however isn't that hard because Kaching's E is such a short cooldown and there are two halves that you can consistently trigger. 4-piece Thunder Soother also allows you to deal meaningful electro damage from your E and Q to help with mobs. 4-piece Glad is my third ranked set. It provides stats that are just generically good for your basic attacks. Like the 2-piece Glad 2-piece Bloodstained build, it is very simple to play because it doesn't require you to fulfill any conditions to receive the bonuses. However, 4-piece Glad does not affect your charge attacks, which is something you'll be using a lot as auto kaching. I have 4-piece Bullet ranked lower than Glad, however I truly believe that if you have good shield supports or a Geo character or both and micromanage your shields uptime, this is better than all of the artifacts sets listed. 40% damage bonus on your basic and charge attacks plus increased shield durability means you'll be able to stay on the field longer and deal more damage. I have 4-piece Bloodstain last because it's really only good against large mobs. Since you need to kill an enemy to get a boost to your charge attacks, this is worthless in a lot of fights. It's just not versatile enough to be better than the rest of the sets here. I'll briefly talk about constellations even though I know for a 5-star unit it's not relevant to most players. For Electro Kaching, C1, C4, and C6 are your biggest power spikes. C3 and C5 are also very good because they allow your E and Q to do more damage. C2 is not as relevant compared to the other constellations since you generally have an easy time getting 40 energy. For Physical Kaching, C4 is the only one that gives you a meaningful power spike. As far as talents for both builds, prioritize your basic attack first. For Electro Kaching, max your burst second, and for Physical Kaching, focus on your E second. That's it for my Kaching build guide. I hope this will prove helpful to you guys and give you guys a better understanding of what works best when playing her as your main carry. Kaching has one of the smoothest attack animations in the game, and her kit makes her very flashy and fun to play. She also has a very high skill ceiling, a lot of cool and unique combo sequences, and a lot of different viable build paths that gives you relevant choices based on what enemies you're facing. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. I will also try my best to answer any questions you may have. If you haven't subscribed and enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that sub button. I promise to deliver quality Genshin Impact content week in and week out, so make sure you're subbed so you have access to them. Thanks for watching. Till next time.